How's it going everybody? I'm Steve and welcome back to my channel. So tonight I want to rank the filmography from David Fincher. He's one of my favorite directors. Uh, he has uh, 12 films here. Uh, actually, 10 of them I have on physical media. Two of them are not on physical media, so I'll explain that further later on. But, uh, but uh, so uh, overall, you know, Fincher started off uh, directing music videos back in the, like in the 90s. And uh, he, I think he used to work for uh, Industrial Light and Magic years ago. But uh, so, you know, the Fox Studios gave him a, a big break uh, in 1992, which is my, my 12th film here. It's uh, Alien 3. It's, you know, it brought back uh, Scorny Weaver, uh, obviously the legend from the uh, 1979 and 1986 films. Uh, this movie looked kind of odd at the time. I actually didn't see this in the theater originally uh, because it looked so odd and, and, um, and it was so strange that they brought back the character after so many years, uh, even though it had been less, uh, less time since, since, you know, from Aliens to, to the original Alien. Uh, but um, as uh, you know, Charles Dance, if, if, if you're you know, familiar with Game of Thrones, he played uh, Tywin Lannister on that TV series on HBO. Also has uh, you know, Charles Dudden, you know, he was kind of kind of popular in the late 80s, early 90s time period there. So yeah, but yeah, very, very British cast and a lot of cast members I didn't know at the time that I kind of I've discovered over the years since then. But uh, yeah, so I've got this at number 12. At number 11 from 2002, I have Panic Room. This is the one you know, starring uh, Jodie Foster and a, and a young uh, Kristen Stewart. Uh, this is uh, one that's uh, still on DVD. I, I, it's been talked about for years of getting released on, on Blu-ray or, or 4K, but it still has not. Uh, you know, I wish it would. I, I would buy it again and get, definitely give it a watch again. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, he, Fincher uses like uh, CGI in, in, in this movie, and he uses, he's used it throughout his career of uh, building kind of like cityscapes and just kind of background uh, kind of kind of images. Uh, he doesn't really he doesn't use a, use a CGI for a, a lot of uh, creatures or anything anything like that. But it's very subtle how he uses it. A lot of times you don't even know it's there. You know, it's 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 it, it, in that way. It's a, it's kind of brilliant how he uses it. But yeah, Panic Room. I, I would definitely give us a, give give us one another watch if it, if it were uh, released on Blu-ray. At number ten from 2008, I have The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. This is on the uh, Criterion Collection. Uh, it's a, it's got the blue case, which is a very rare. Kind of thing. I've, I've seen some people uh, replace the blue case with like a clear case to kind of make it look like the others. And I, this one had a, a, a slip cover on it as well, which is a, I, I bought this one used. Uh, I, I had this on uh, DVD before, and I, I'm not sure if it had a, a slip cover on that one either. But uh, but yeah, the, this one, uh, you know, Brad Pitt uh, has a, the great uh, Kate Blanchett uh, in it. Uh, the, the movie's a little bit too long, and kind of sad in a lot of ways. It, it's a, it's one I, I don't watch that often, but. Uh, I think I probably watched this one maybe like three or four years ago, uh, but obviously it's in the in the Criterion Collection, so I definitely have to keep it. And, and it's a, I think it's it's pretty good, but it just overall overall the running time it kind of kind of makes it difficult to watch. But yeah, so I've got this number ten. At number nine for 2020, I have the movie Mank. This is you know starring Gary Oldman. Uh, I saw this one at like a landmark theater back in, in, in that year, 2020. It's a, it's one that's uh, you know produced by Netflix and it, it's you know obviously it was released during the pandemic and, and at that time you know anytime you tell people that, that something's going to be on Netflix so they'll they'll wait just to watch it at home as opposed to seeing it in a theater especially at that time but but uh, you know I, I I thought this this was a good movie it's a, it's like in black and white it's uh, co-written by uh, David Fincher's uh, father uh, and it's about the uh, like the the story of Citizen Kane basically writing the, the script for Citizen Kane. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to watch this one again. So it's, it's been since 2020, the last time I saw it. And I actually don't have Netflix anymore, so I, I, I haven't been able to watch it since then. And I, I'm going to uh, show a poster here of, of what the uh, Criterion cover was supposed to look like, or, what, or at least rumored what it's supposed to look like. And uh, so it's, it's been rumored to, to get a release from them for, for a number of years. And I guess it's maybe because of uh, Netflix maybe not, not uh, licensing the, the, the title out because they probably still have it on their channel. Uh, so. Who knows if we'll ever get it on physical media, but uh, I'd love to see Criterion pick this one up. So at number eight from 2023, I have another one that's a Netflix uh, uh, title, and it's uh, the movie called The Killer, you know, starring Michael Fassbender. Uh, this is a really kind of dark uh, kind of story. Uh, this, the, the character that Fassbender plays is, is a, you know, a re really kind of dark kind of thing, and, and it's, it's a lot of pretty violent kind of movie. Uh, really interesting. Uh, some people uh, didn't didn't love the ending to it apparently, but. Uh, I, I would love to get this one on, on uh, you know, Criterion or, or somewhere on, on, on uh, you know, physical media at some point, but uh, obviously it's going gonna, it's gonna to have its run on Netflix for a long time, and who knows if we'll ever get it on physical media, but uh, yeah, I, I thought this was a quality uh, action film anyway. At number seven for 2011, I have The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. You know, this has uh, Daniel Craig while he was still playing James Bond at the time. 
uh, has a Rooney Mara. Uh, she plays Elizabeth. Uh, this is a uh, Swedish character that uh, in, in Sweden they had like in 2009 they had like three of these films get released. So it's kind of a beloved character, the Elizabeth char you know, character. And uh, apparently at the time uh, they didn't really didn't really like Rooney Mara playing that character. It's kind of you know, beloved in, in that country, but I, I think eventually she kind of kind of won them over. You know, just uh, she's got the you know, the piercings and and you know. She's got the, the wild hair and, the, and the, the eyebrows and everything. I thought she did a good job in this movie. Uh, you know, it's a, I, I watch this one every now and then, and I, I love it. It's a really dark story. I love, love the ending to it. At number six from 2014, I have Gone Girl. This uh, movie is really, really dark. It you know, has, has Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike. Uh, it's a, the, their relationship is really dysfunctional and uh, really interesting here. At, uh, you know, there's a, really one, one really, really violent scene in this movie that uh, I, I've never forgotten. <laughs> there, but uh, uh, but yeah, this is a really odd couple, and uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, the the whole the whole uh, storyline there is uh, really interesting. So yeah, I've got this number six. At number five for 1987, I have the game. You know, starring uh, Michael Douglas and Sean Penn and uh, Deborah Unger. Uh, I, I love this uh, this movie. I uh, think Michael Michael Douglas is really great in this. Uh, it's a uh, this one. It you know, maybe it's slightly too long. I think, and some people say that once they've seen the ending, they, they don't really want to care to see it again. But you know, Finch, Fincher has two movies in his uh, filmography that, that definitely have that kind of shocking ending that I'd, I'd never get tired of, you know, but uh, there definitely are some movies that I've seen that, that have that kind of ending and I, I have gotten tired of, but this is not one of them though. I, I, this is from the Criterion Collection. Uh, I think I've owned this like three, t this is like the third time I've owned it. I think I had it, I also had it on Criterion on DVD and then I had it on like a standard DVD before that. So, but yeah, so I, I don't know if I'm, I don't think this has a 4K release. So I don't know if I'm ever gonna, ever gonna buy it again, uh, yeah, upgrade it again, but yeah, I definitely love the Criterion. At number four from 1999, I have Fight Club, you know, starring Edward Norton and Brad Pitt. Really great, it has the, uh, the late meatloaf in it. Uh, you know, it's a very violent movie. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a fun kind of frat boy kind of movie, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. And I, I saw this in the theater, like I said, I've, I've seen all, all of his movies in the, in the theater, except for Alien 3. And, um, very you know, kind of shocking ending, and I love the uh, narration that uh, Edward Norton does throughout the movie. So yeah, I r really enjoy this one. At number three from 2007, I have Zodiac, you know, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Mark Ruffalo. I thought Fincher did a really good job, but, you know, based on the material he had available to him. You know, this is based on the Zodiac killer, uh, and you know, I thought some of the things that they, they talk about in this movie have kind of been you know disproven since this one came out. But I, I thought he did a great, really good job with what he had available to him. Uh, the movie might be slightly too long, but it has a very eerie kind of kind of theme to it and kind of vibe to it. So yeah, Zodiac number three. At number two from 2010, I have The Social Network. Uh, this year, that particular year, I thought this was going to win Best Picture at the Oscars for sure. <laughs> and then the King's Speech kind of came out of nowhere. It seemed like, and, and uh, I think it may have won like the BAFTA. The, the King's Speech did, and, and I think that that's a great movie. But uh, at the time, I, I thought this one was going to win for sure. And I, back then, I didn't keep track of like the, the different uh, award shows, and I, so I had no idea. I'd never heard of uh, the King's Speech, but like I said, I think that, that's a great movie as well. But I, I really thought this one was going to win. You know, it has uh, Jesse Eisenberg, it has the, the future Spider-Man, uh, Andrew Garfield, and, and Justin Timberlake. I thought they were all great in this. This is another one where uh, Fincher used uh, you know CGI to like I think on the, the, the campus of, of Harvard, he, he built like some of the different buildings and kind of gave it the landscape kind of changed because of the CGI. But you'd never know that if, if, you, if you watch the special features, they, they talk about how they added the, those scenes, you know, the background kind of footage uh, to each scene, and, and like you'd never know it if you if you if you didn't if you didn't if you didn't you know tell it tell you that it was in it, you would never know that. So, but yeah, Social Network number two. So at number one from 1995, I have Seven. It's a great movie. Uh, yeah, Morgan Freeman. It's got Brad Pitt. I'm not even going to mention the other cast members because I give way too much away. Uh, but uh, obviously, I'm sure most people have seen this movie, but. Uh, you know, I have it on Blu-ray. I think it's on. It might be on 4K now, but uh, definitely a very dark movie. Uh, you know, it's it's based on the uh, Seven De Deadly Sins and uh, very graphic. Very, it's it's considered to be a, th a thriller, but it's almost like horror, like almost like a horror movie in a lot of ways. But uh, yeah, and they they kind of show it's really graphic. You know how it is. You know, but uh, but yeah, definitely definitely a great movie. And it's a that that line at the end of the movie has been quoted for years. And so yeah, love this one. So thank you for watching tonight. Uh, and, this is uh, really exciting. My, my channel's almost at 500 subs, which I never thought that would ever happen. <laughs> and that there, I'd, I'd love to have that before the end of the year, you know, before Christmas time. Uh, love to love to get that. But I uh, uh, really thank people for watching my videos. It definitely 
lifts my spirits a lot, especially during the holidays, you know, that, that, that time period. But, uh, you know, it, uh, please, uh, please put a thumbs up on this video. And if you're, if, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, really love to have you on my channel. And uh, so everybody have a great night and uh, talk to you later. Bye.